It's a story of a foreclosure, one of many on Hawaii Island, or it's a pivotal moment in the legal struggle of the occupied Hawaiian kingdom. In the least, it's a documentation of a Puna man's forced eviction from the place he's called home for more than a decade. At most, it's a glimpse of a hidden reality that clouds the title of every commercial and residential property in the state, and the linchpin to testing an international understanding of America's relationship to Hawaii. Every state except Hawaii has a treaty. It's a series in five parts by Big Island Video News entitled Defected testing Hawaiian sovereignty. Previously in our five-part series, we covered the eviction of Kale Gumapak from his home in Hawaiian Paradise Park and his plan to build a legal case against the foreclosure based on a claim that there is a defect in title. I was made aware of the defect in title in 2011 that I wasn't aware of. A universal defect that exists in the title to every property in the state of Hawaii. All titles in Hawaii both residential and commercial, are defective. And we covered the historical basis for that legal claim as presented by Dr. Ke'anu Sai. You might say Hawaii in 1893 was kidnapped, but it was treated like it was adopted. Both men argue that since there is no treaty of annexation, then Hawaii must be under U.S. occupation, and that as a rule of international law, the laws of the Hawaiian kingdom must be upheld and followed. The laws of occupation applies not U.S. laws, but Hawaiian Kingdom laws. And all of us here needs to understand what that means. But it's not so simple. For one thing, Gumapak and his supporter, Robert Keli'i Ho'omalu, say requirements for a title search in Hawaii are not the same as on the mainland. Only in Hawaii is they change the law to go back only in three conveyances because if they go all the way back when, when, um, when titles were started, they would find a whole lot of discrepancies way back there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thousands, thousands of them. Right. Bureau of Conveyances actually started in 1845. And so when they do a title search, a title search is supposed to go back from today all the way back to 1845. I see. Okay. And so, but they don't because during the period of 1893 and 1898 when the overthrow took place you had insurgents now in charge of the Bureau of Conveyances and that's when a lot of uh, broken titles were took place and so when you start to see the chain of titles in order for the banks to get title insurance Okay, there cannot be any broken chain of titles. And so when the Bureau of Conveyances does a title search, and if they run into a problem with a, bro uh, a broken title chain, you cannot get title insurance. And if you cannot get title insurance, the banks cannot loan you money to buy that piece of property or buy that house. Okay, and during that five or six year time period between 1893 and 1898 there was a lot thousands and thousands of <laughs> fraudulent things that took place yeah, yeah. and it's still on the books in the Bureau of Conveyances. In 2009 a foreclosure crisis had hit the country and Hawaii was especially affected. What the banks say is that we you know we never want to um, move anybody out of their homes uh, absolutely uh, contrary to what their statements were. That's former House Representative Bob Herkes in 2011, describing the hard times that fell on many island homeowners. I have a cousin in South Point. She had been paying her mortgage for years. Somebody showed up at the front door one day and says, I bought, your, I bought this home yesterday at auction. Uh, she didn't know anything about it. Uh, it turns out that the mortgage company that she'd been paying the money to had gone broke. Nobody bothered to tell her. She didn't know anything about the auction. When this was filmed, the state had just passed one of the toughest foreclosure consumer aid laws in the country. Herkes helped propose the legislation. First, we had to stop all of the abuse. Uh, and most of the bill deals with those abuses. Gumapak had another idea to combat the crisis. It started all about the same time I started, uh, you know, I, I started with Keanu uh, about 2000. Uh, 
2011-2010. Based on the research of Dr. Keanu Sai, Gumapak started a company, Lao Lima Title Search and Claims, to try to block foreclosures. Keanu Sai was retained as a consultant. And he told me about this. Uh, I automatically switched because I was doing, I was trying to help people prior to meeting Dr. Sai. Uh, using the securitization argument. And Gumapak himself would be one of the first clients. We sent all of the documented evidence to Deutsche Bank. And all the way up to then, I was making my payments, you know, diligently. This argument has been made before. In the 1990s, the company, Perfect Title, challenged the validity of title in court. Keanu Sai was one of the perfect title principles. Sai details the company and its relationship to the acting government of the Hawaiian Kingdom in a presentation uploaded to Vimeo. Eventually, the company was raided by authorities. Sai says it's because perfect title was threatening to upend the Hawaii real estate market. Sai was later indicted on an attempted theft charge in court. A jury found Sai guilty of first-degree attempted theft for helping a couple try to reclaim an IAEA home they lost through foreclosure. Perfect Title is now defunct, and Kale Gumapak's Laulima seems to pick up where that company left off, informing Deutsche Bank of the defect he says exists in the title to his own property in Hawaiian Paradise Park. And I said, you guys need to file a claim. And they ignored it. Under the title insurance policy, once an insured is notified that there is a defect, they're obligated to file a claim, regardless of how frivolous it might be under the title insurance. But they ignored it. They didn't do it. And so I, I, I decided not to make the payment on the loan because every time you make a payment on the loan, the title insurance policy decreases. It's kind of like a decreasing <coughs> policy. And at the same time, I will never see or recover my monthly payment back. So it's lost. And the bank will not have a reason to file a claim. So I decided I'm gonna lose my monthly payment anyway. So I'm not gonna make the payment to the bank and kind of force them to file a claim with a title insurance company. So that's what I decided. But according to Kali, the bank apparently had its own plans on how to move forward. They move to a non-judicial foreclosure. And when they did that, we ended up going to court. And it states in the in the contract too, they're not supposed to do a Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And in the con in the mortgage contract, it says that when I submitted when I sent them the notice they're not supposed to take any kind of legal action, you know, against me in the contract. All right. And but they took it anyway and they're breaching the contract all over the place. Mm. And I'm going, Hey, <laughs> how come you guys are doing this? You know, I'm following the contract. Gumapak had the documents with him, showing the foreclosure went to court in summer of twenty eleven. Diane D. Gumapak was the defendant, that's Kale's ex-wife with whom he shared the home. Deutsche Bank is the plaintiff, the judge was the Honorable Harry Freitas. Attorney Dexter Kayama represented Gumapak. And Judge Freitas agrees. He dismisses the foreclosure case. And this is the, this is the order that he, he makes in our favor, and he renders that foreclosure case moot, okay? And he agrees that there's a title issue. And so now we're expecting Deutsche Bank, okay, go file the title insurance claim. And they take us back into court again. And they said, oh, Judge Freitas, you were wrong. And, he's, and they were accusing him of real stupid stuff. We go back into court and Judge Freitas says, Read the transcripts because I cited that there was a title issue. And again, he rules against Deutsche Bank. A second time. A second time. Okay. And so, in addition to that, 
I now send a letter to Deutsche Bank. Okay, I send this letter to Deutsche Bank and it's dated November 22nd, 2011. To notify Deutsche Bank that they need to file a title insurance claim in light of the judgment. And I attached a copy of a title insurance policy with store title, you know, to them. And all of the, the sections in the title insurance policy that says that they are responsible to file the claim with steward title, okay? And it's really important for them to do this. They ignore it. They continue to ignore it. So as a result of that, the next step I did was I hired an attorney, okay, so that we would file a case and sue Deutsche Bank in federal court. And we had to take this case to federal court in California <clears throat> because we didn't want to do it here because we did, do not recognize the courts in Hawaii, their jurisdiction. So we decided to sue Deutsche Bank in federal court. The outcome in U.S. District Court was a little different. The federal court ruled against us because they said, we're a third party. In other words, we're not the insured. Deutsche Bank has got a file for the title insurance policy, not us. Gumapak and his wife Diane have since divorced. Kale kept the house, and with it, the continued foreclosure litigation. They take me to circuit court into Judge Nakamura's court. Now, Gumapak and Laulima would employ a different tactic. They would begin to argue jurisdiction which would lead to this press conference in May of this year, held in Kale's still-occupied home on 2nd Avenue, the home base of Laulima Title, surrounded by other clients of Dexter Kayama who were also fighting foreclosure. I'm sitting here with my clients, um, and my clients have authorized me to speak on their behalf uh, about matters dealing with the commission of war crimes and the commission of felonies by judges in the Third, third Circuit's Court of the State of Hawaii. Um, my clients uh, have been deprived of a fair and regular trial, which is afforded to them under the Geneva Convention. We will detail those war crime accusations. It's been called the nuclear option in Hawaiian legal circles, and the strange story of the so-called police investigation into those accusations that resulted in the reprimand of an officer. It's the bank that yeah. breached the contract, and now it's the judges and the sheriffs that are breaking the law. Hawaii, in 1893, was kidnapped, but it was treated like it was adopted. The problem is we can't find adoption papers. And Judge Freitas agrees. He dismisses the foreclosure case. Has been a violation of the Geneva Convention, the commission of war crimes, and the commission of felonies by judges in the Third Circuit's Court of the State of Hawaii. It was totally unexpected, and uh, they showed up at 7.10 in the morning. They came with uh, task force. Task force. Fugitive Task Force.